water cycle, also known as hydrologic cycle or hydrological cycle, describes the continuous movement of water on, above and below the surface of Earth. The mass of water on Earth remains fairly constant over time by the partitioning of the water into the major reservoirs of ice, fresh water, saline water and atmospheric water is variable depending on a wide range of climatic variables. The water moves from one reservoir to another, such as from river to ocean or from the ocean to the atmosphere by the physical process of evaporation, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, surface runoff and subsurface flow. In doing so, the water goes through different forms which is liquids, solids and vapors. The water cycles involve the exchange of energy which leads to temperature change. When water evaporates, it takes up energy from its surroundings and cools the environment. When it condenses, it releases energy and warms the environment. This heat exchange influences climate. The evaporative phase of the cycle purifies water which then replenishes the land with fresh water. The flow of liquid water and ice transport minerals across the globe. It is also involved in reshaping the geological features of the earth through process including erosion and sedimentation. The water cycle is also essential for the maintenance of most life and ecosystem on the planet. The sun, which drives the water cycle, heats water in ocean and seas. Water evaporates as water vapor in the air. Some ice and snow sublimates directly into water vapor. Evapotranspiration is water transpired from plants and evaporate from the soil. Water molecule has smaller molecular mass than the major components of the atmosphere, nitrogen and oxygen, hence is less dense. Due to the significant difference in density, buoyancy drives humid air higher. As altitude increase, air pressure decreases and the temperature drops. The lower temperature causes water vapor to condense into tiny liquid water droplets which are heavier than the air and fall unless supported by an updraft. A huge concentration of these droplets over a large space up in the atmosphere become visible as cloud. Some condensation is near ground level and called fog. The water cycle is important to all life on Earth for many reasons. All living organisms require water and the water describe the process of how water moves through the planet. Plants will not grow without precipitation and thus anything consuming the plants will not survive and so forth. Infiltration of water filters and clean our water. Glacier, ice and snow can add has store of fresh, fresh water for both human and other organisms. Runoff contributes to rivers, other freshwater bodies and eventually the oceans sustaining freshwater and marine life. All of this process sustain life and create the ecosystem around us. Some organisms are very sensitive to changes in the water cycles. A prolonged drought can destroy a population or plant or a certain salamander species may require a set amount of Soil saturation in order to avoid desiccation. Life on Earth needs water. It is important to us that when we are searching for life on other planets, the first thing we look for is liquid water. But water is not always a liquid on Earth. It changes for a gas and solid as part of the water cycle. That's why the water cycle is important to us. As a conclusion, the water cycle is important because it is how water reach plants, animals and us. Besides providing people, animals and plants with water, it is also move things like nutrients, pathogens and sediment in and out of aquatic ecosystems. Hi, my name is Tammy Mei and today I'm going to discuss about climate change issue. Climate change issue is the ongoing rise of the average temperature in the Earth climate system. The primary drive of the increased global temperature in the industrial era is human activities. Basically, climate change is caused by excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, most of which come from human activities such as burning fossil fuel, 
and farming. The carbon dioxide trapping heat from the sun in Earth atmosphere resulting in increased global temperature. However, this doesn't mean that it's simply getting hotter everywhere. Climate change actually impacts the world water in complex ways. So, how the climate change affecting water cycle? Consider a water cycle diagram. Global warming is uttering nearly every stage in the diagram. Increased global temperature lead to increase in evaporation and increasing the rate of the water cycle. Increased evaporation create more cloud and more precipitation forming as rain rather than snow due to the increased temperature. This not only causes more rain, but it also changes the pattern and intensity of rainfall. This not only lead to flooding for the excess rain, but it also increases the intensity and frequency of drought in other regions prone to arid conditions. Changes in water runoff into rivers and streams are another expected consequence of climate change by the late 21st century. The map show the predicted increases in runoff in blue and decreases in brown and red. Warmer temperatures have led to increased drying of the land surface in some areas with the effect of an increased incidence and severity of drought. Thank you. that is our flow and water that flows on shallow land has the time to infiltrate the soil. The water will eventually flow into the stream and rivers and increase the amount of water. Other than that, surface water always travels towards the lowest point possible, usually the oceans. to the river, the amount of water will increase and cause a spike. The water will reach high level to the tree in the surrounding area. The small branches will eventually broken and carried by the current water flow and floating in the river and causes water pollution. The after effect of flood also cause bad mesh and the dew. Thank you. Here, I want to show the real example of the water cycle, which how evaporation, condensation, and precipitation process occur. of the water cycle happen due to human activities such as deforestation, burning of fossil fuels, and generating hydroelectricity. 
For instance, urbanization, climate change and cloud seeding were a few impacts regarding human activities. So, I would like to explain a little bit about urbanization, climate change and cloud seeding. Urbanization happens when natural water cycle cannot function properly in urban areas due to buildings, concrete and other surfaces like tar roads that are preventing the water from reaching the ground and allowing the water to soak into the soil. Land subsidence might happen due to the lower amount of water supply in the ground. For climate change, it happens due to human activities in which more human influence the quality of the available water. Also, climate change intensifies the water cycle by increasing the air temperature due to the more water evaporates into the air. Therefore, the air temperature increase can lead to problems like extreme rainstorms that can cause major floods around the world. Then, cloud seeding. Cloud seeding is a weather modification where changes in the amount or the type of precipitation that falls from the cloud. The cloud seeding is needed to increase the precipitation falls for certain places that undergo less sufficient water in planting and had a drought. But the bad effects could happen such as floods and the unpredictable changes in weather due to the climate change happen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nuraimi Izati binti Muhammad Rani. And I would like to present about the real life example of water cycle and negative impact. Every time you see rain or snow or even watch a river flow, you are actually witness the part of hydrological cycle, which is water cycle. Okay, once the water vapor in the atmosphere at low temperature can cause the vapor to either condense into a liquid or it or undergo deposition to form ice crystal. The water droplet in the cloud could collide to form larger droplet that fall as a rain. Ice crystal falls to ground as a snowflake. Both rain and snow are form of precipitation which water that fall to the earth's surface. When liquid water loses its thermal energy, it undergoes freezing which changes state from the liquid to the ice form. We can see many examples of this phenomena in our everyday life. At low temperature, earth surface water will form isolate. Isolate is slightly less dense than liquid water. This explains why during the winter, lake and pond develop layer of ice that float on the liquid water and the earth. Winter will melt as the spring arrive. The snow meat, uh, the snow meat flow into the stream and into a stream and river and eventually into the ocean. Some of the snowflake melt, sink into the ground and becoming groundwater. Why? The surface water will evaporate to become water vapor and start the water cycle over again. Okay. okay. The negative impact are such as flood because of the rain season. Then, acid rain. Acid rain may occur when sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide release to the air and collide with the water vapor as a rain. Lastly, the groundwater will contaminate. This is, this is because when the acid rain sinks into the ground. For the lead analysis of the water cycle, we can use the alkalinity test of the water. And this alkalinity of water is measure of its capacity to neutralize acid. It is primarily due to the source of weak acid, although weak or strong base may also contribute. Alkali is usually imparted by bicarbonate, carbonate, and hydroxide. First, we will collect our sample either from lake, river, or pond. And it is measured volumetrically by the titration with 0.02 molar sulfuric acid and is spotted in terms of calcium carbonate equivalent. For sample, who initial pH is above 8.3, the titration is conducted in two steps. In the first step, the titration is conducted until the pH is lower to 8.2, the point at which penethylene indicator turns from pink to the colorless. 
this value corresponding to the point for conversion of carbonate to bicarbonate ion until the pH is lower 4.5 corresponding to the metric orange endpoint which corresponding to equivalent point for the conversion of bicarbonate ion to the carbonic acid. From the result obtained, if the alkalinity value of 0 until 100 mg per litre, often the result is corrective factor if the pH is also low, which is less than 7. If alkalinity value of 100 until 200 mg per litre, that is an idea. And if the alkalinity value greater than 200 mg per litre can lead it deposit or scaling in the plumbing. Okay, this is procedure for the alkalinity test of water. oxygen required to oxidize soluble and particulate organic matter in water. COD can be measured in real time with our COD analyzer to improve wastewater process control and plant efficiency. Why COD is important water quality parameter? It is because it is similar to BOD. It provides an index to assess the effect discharge waste water will have on the receiving environment. High COD level means a greater amount of oxidized organic material in the sample, which will reduce the dissolved oxygen level. A reduction to DO can lead to anaerobic condition, which is cause harm to the aquatic environment and living thing in the water. Uh, a common method for COD analysis is a method 410.4. The method involves using a strong oxidizing chemical which is potassium dichromate to oxidize the organic matter in the solution to carbon dioxide and water under acidic condition. Often, the test also involves a silver compound to encourage oxidation of a certain organic compound and mercury to reduce the interference from oxidation of chloride ions. Then, the sample will be digested approximately in for 2 hours at 150 degrees Celsius. Lastly, the amount of oxygen required is calculated from the quantity of chemical oxidant consumed. COD can be tested by chemically oxidizing organic matter under conditions of heat and strong acids. Here, the presence of a very strong oxidant is necessary to ensure the proper measurement. Lately, the most common acid applied for the test is potassium dichromate, which is a hexavalent chromium salt and very strong oxidant oxidizing between 95 to 100 percent of all organic matter. The technique involves a two-hour digestion process in which samples are mixed with potassium dichromate, sulfuric acid and metal salts. The last two added to suppress interference and catalyze the reaction. 
After the digestion process is finished, the oxidation is measured considering the electrons consumed for the reduction of Cr6 plus to Cr3 plus and analyzed by spectrophotometry. Since the potassium dichromate shifts from yellow to dull green as it oxidizes, the samples can be read in wavelengths of 600 and 420 nanometer. Selamat sejahtera and good afternoon, Doctor. My name is Ryan Tan Johnson, matrix number J17A0045. This is my matrix cards. I don't know if Doctor can see it clearly. Okay. So today I'm going to present my presentation with the help of Google Meet. So let me switch to my slide right now. Okay, so my, my topic of presentation today is drought. So as we all know, water cycle happens when water evaporated from the surface of the earth as water vapor and condense at the atmosphere of the earth and then fall off as rain to re-moisturize the earth. So this cycle continues without stop. But if this cycle continues, then why would drought happen? It turns out that drought happens because of the lack of upward vertical motions of the water vapor, as you can see clearly. Right, the sign right here, uh, right, the arrow, the direction of the arrow right here. If there is no vertical upward motion of the water vapor, that means that the water vapor will travel along and be blown by the wind to other areas. As more and more water evaporated without condensing as rain, that means that the local water supply will turn out very low and eventually there's a shortage of water. And in that case, if the shortage of water prolongs, drought will happen. Drought usually happens due to climate change, where warmer, where warmer temperature resulted in the lack of condensation of water. Hi, Assalamualaikum. Today, I would like to talk about the case from the climate change and water cycle in our global system. As we know, climate change and water cycle may affect our global system and can cause excessive rain. So, what is excessive rain? Excessive rain is known as a heavy rainfall and it is have greater 100 mm in 24 hours. If it is occurs within a few hours, it may, may lead to the flight. This case may affect our country around the world. One of the country that affect with the excessive rain is India. The flood phenomena in India, it is because of due to the different climatic and rainfall patterns in different regions. The flooding is caused by the inadequate capacity within the banks of the rivers that contain high flows bogged down from the upper catchment due to the heavy rainfall. Flooding caused by erosion and silting of the river beds, resulting in the res reduction of the carrying capacity of the river channels. Furthermore, in 1980, National Commission of Flood assessed the total area liable to flooding in the country as 40 million hectares, which constitute one egg of the country's total geographical area. The after effect, such as the suffering from the survivors, spread the disease, non availability of commodities, medicine, and law of dwellings, made the flood is the most feared of the natural disaster faced by humankind. is formed when the byproducts of the nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide which is mainly from the automobiles and the industrial emissions uh, that will combine with the water and particulates uh, in the atmosphere. As 
acid rain uh, has been reported in Mumbai with the pH uh, of 3.5. When the acid rain is fall onto the statues, buildings and other man-made structure, it will damage its surfaces. At, uh, at Taj Mahal, uh, the acid rain uh, is reacted with the marble which is calcium carbonate and it will uh, cause damage to the heritage structure. The acid rain will corrode the metals uh, and will make the paint and stone to deteriorate more quickly. Furthermore, uh, the Taj Mahal will turn in yellow because of the combination of the uh, acid rain and the air pollution. the Taj Mahal, uh, the government of India called as Neri is target to clean the air pollution uh, at the Taj Trapezium. Taj Trapezium refers to the town of the Agra, Mathura and Firozabad. Uh, according to this plan, uh, over 2,000 industries around the town has been transferred.